Hey guys, Thingfishy here with episode 3 of my Elden Ring boss parry guide. So first of all, I've said this before in previous videos, but the best advice that I can give anyone who wants to get better at parrying is to focus on the enemy's arm or their hand and try to parry the hand rather than the weapon. For those of you who've tried this but could use a little more guidance, in this series I'll be breaking down each enemy's attack and will be telling you exactly where your parry inputs should be. So today, by popular demand, I'm going to be covering Banished Knights. Now I must admit, when you guys suggested this, I had no idea who the Banished Knights were. But the answer is, for anyone who played DS3, they're Lothric Knights. So anyone who learns parry in Lothric Castle, as I did, is going to have a really easy time here. I'm using this one at the Church of Dragon Communion in Kaelid just because you have a lot more room here than the ones in Stormvale Castle, but they are the same enemies. And this is actually a great place to come to to practice your parries, with one of these guys being right next to this grace. So what's the deal with these enemies? Well, it's good news for all you parry gods because every single melee attack these guys have is parryable. So let's go through them. First up, we have the standard overhead swing. For this attack, your input needs to be just here when his sword is facing towards you and just begins to rotate. Next up we have this backhand horizontal swing. You want to parry here when he reaches the very end of his wind up. Now for his stab attack. Now this one's actually pretty hard to get used to the timing of. It's quite easy to misjudge. You want to parry here at the point where you see his body first begin to move towards you. Now for his two-handed combo. This can be a little tricky because it's faster than his standard attacks, but your input needs to be just here, just before his hand reaches its highest point in the swing. Now if you do miss this first attack, you can tank it and parry the second attack of this two-handed combo by parrying here, as his weapon is just finishing the backswing. Now for the attacks that can't be parried. First up we have his shield bash. Just roll this as his shield is at its furthest point away from you. Then there's the charged up storm effect weapon art he has with the shield. This starts as a stomp followed by a charge attack. He will generally do this when you create a little distance between you and him. So just be prepared to roll dodge this when you see him raise his shield as he approaches you. And finally we have his fire attack. Once again he will generally do this when there is some distance between you. So you can just strafe and then roll out of its area of effect. And that's it guys, this enemy is relatively simple. He's also a good step up from the Church of Ella Soldier for any of you looking for a slightly more advanced practice dummy for your parrying. As usual, I hope you found this video useful and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see many more of these in-depth parry tutorials. Thanks for watching, see you soon.